birthday cakes and things. Cheesecake, Victoria sponge. Afternoon tea. Basic chocolate fudge cakes. Coffee cake. Fruit cake. Any excuse to make cakes. Right, so the cake, Emily. <laughs> yes. So have you got some ideas about what you want? Yeah, because I do like loads of dance and drama since I was like really young. It's like a big part of my life, so I want dancers. And... Right, and what sort of dancers are we, well, are we thinking of? Well, like ballet, really. Ballet? Oh, yes. that's interesting. Any, um, any sort of particular type of ballet that you like? Is it modern, traditional? Well, it's like modern, really, modern, modern ballet, and a bit of hip hop as well, just to mix it up a bit because they're like the complete opposite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've got like a contrast going yes. on. Yes. This is going to be. <laughs> There's a smile on my face. <laughs> I love things like this. Yes. These are special birthdays. Mum's really got to make them another birthday cake. So I started to research what I was going to make um, Patrick. Patrick's very much into Star Wars. So um, I sort of started looking at Star Wars cakes and different things. And there was a, a 3D Yoda cake. And I thought, no, I have to make that. And um, I was quite impressed with, with the, the way it turned out. In fact, I was really pleased with myself. Normally, I mean, you get your sort of Victoria sponges or your just basic chocolate fudge cakes and stuff. As long as, I mean, the problem is chocolate fudge cake, people like to sprinkle nuts on top. Um, so when you go out for a bite to eat, even in like a cafe or something, you see those little cakes that are in the, in the little glass cabinet. Everyone gets excited about them and I look over and I go, ah, oh, nuts on them. every year up until they were 10 and then you know 13 and 16 and mm. then when they could talk me into giving them another one <laughs> <laughs> but I always remember mm. the princess cake mm. she used to make like you stick the doll in the top and the that's cake right. was the big Not dress on your that's right. I must admit my my wedding cake because I've been married twice from my second wedding it was beautiful but she said to me oh I'm going to put sherry glasses in it because it was a soft cake it's going to stand on sherry glasses she said it would be lovely but she she put the sherry glasses upside down oh right and by the time we got there the cake had fallen oh, grief <laughs> so they still look nice yes. <laughs> the top bit was yeah. broken and so we're going to go with gold bin thing hopefully through both the cakes that will be the sort of recurring colour because the other side of the cake will have um, gold stars on it so there will be a connection between the two cakes there. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue into each of these little holes. And then <coughs> I can pick the little ball up and it will just sit in. So I've still got a bit of glue on my process. It drops off. There you go. Have you heard about um, the notion of afternoon tea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of yes. Afternoon teas, cakes and stuff. I've seen people try it, but I'm not a big fan of sweets, you know. So. Not a big fan. No. Sweet things, then it, oh right, okay, nothing like compared to what we have here, you know, but still, you know, we do have things, something called chakri, you know, it's like a pounded rice, you know, with baobab fruits and some kind of, you know, homemade local yogurt and 
have it as a, you know, pudding or dessert or sweet, you know. So how's that made? Well, that's like uh, they, they steam the rice <coughs> and then pound it into flour kind of, you know. And then with the cream, the, it's like a baobab, powdered baobab, you know, and have it with milk, stir it and make it thick, you know. We put it all together and put some coconut flavor flakes in there. It was on Grand National Day when I was probably about 10 or 11. My stepdad, he was on a money saving thing and he told my mum to go out and buy value everything. Just because. So my mum sort of did it. Just okay, I'll, I'll, go out, I'll get everything value. So she bought some value chalk ices. You know, the little chocolate ice cream things. Um, so we bought them, of course, we're all sat there watching the Grand National. And uh, yeah, so we're all tucking into our chalk ices, and then I start getting a bit itchy and a bit sort of red and swelling up, and my throat starts closing up and stuff. Um, so the first thing my mum did was throw me into a cold bath, because she thought that would help. Um, <laughs> so that happened, and then obviously we went down to A&E and had to sit in there while I was sort of puffed up. That, that I'm allergic to peanuts, nuts, cats, grass pollen, and various other bits and bobs that are associated with peanuts. Over there, people don't even celebrate birthdays, or some people don't even know what day they were born. And you know, coming here is an eye opener for me, you know. So, but yeah, as time goes on, you know, you get into the system, you used to it and all that, you know. But then again, I'm talking years and years ago, now again, back home, they celebrate more or less same like here, you know, they have cakes, and well, it's 2013 now, you know, people have moved on, people, things have changed, and you know. People are mixed, European living there, we living here, so you know. We all learn from each other's culture and try each other's culture, so yeah. Big so, difference. I'm excited for this cake, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> You're not to talk about it because I don't know what it is, do you? No, you don't. No, no, I'm your mum's desperate to tell yeah. me, but she hasn't. Oh, and I haven't asked. <laughs> I've been really good. Whenever I come round, go around to Nan and Grandad's, I always have to have a cake that we've named Grandad's cake. Yeah. Because it's his favourite. It's just like a little Vinnie's well. Vinnie's well. The and one of Grandad's cake. So we have a Grandad's cake and some Coke and some mm. sus set. You know now, every time you go around and you can have a piece of cake. Mm. And it's good for you. Yeah. Mm. Good for your memories. I'll, I'll remember that now. Mm. <laughs> Went to the Cheesecake Factory and I had too much cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory, so I don't think you could have had too much it's cheesecake. They give you such a huge it's slice, like, yeah. and it has a big it's chunk of cream with bigger it. Bigger than my head. <laughs> <laughs> and it sort of put me off cheesecake for life. And then for my birthday, I got cheesecake instead of a cake. <laughs> yeah, but I've forgiven you for that. Oh, it's gonna be good now. Are you sure? Yes. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm so, excited. I'm so excited. It's not all I've been talking about. I'd say it was a positive thing. It's it's not any reason for someone to exclude themselves from anything. Um, it just makes you a bit more aware about what you're eating. I mean, as shown with the horse meat thing, no one knows what's going into your food. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's a, it's a dodgy one. But I'd say it's, it's, it's made me more of an individual than anything else, I'd say. Everyone comes out and join in, you know, because yeah. they make a lot of drumming and celebrations and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah food, music and late nights, yeah. I do miss it though. I want to say now and again, I do miss it. Yeah. That's good. It became more and more frequent where I was being asked to make cakes for people and I sort of discovered that my skills were improving. So I started to charge and um, really from there it was a case of, you know, I, I went part-time at work, so I balanced the two of them between each other. And then from there, we took the sort of step to sort of leave work and do this full-time, which is where I am now. <laughs> <laughs>